Hello. 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 Welcome to That's English. Hello. Today's programme is about money. The problem with money is that... That you never have enough? Well, yes, that's one of the problems. But I was thinking of a different problem. British people hate talking about money. Ah, oh, yes. We get embarrassed, don't we? That's right. So, let's start today with how to be British. What do you do when you really must talk about money? We're going to visit our two friends who share a flat. One of them is worried about the washing up liquid. El detergente para vajillas. See if you can hear an expression that means I'm listening carefully. How to be British. Talking about money. Is this a good time to talk to you? Yes, of course. I hope you don't think I'm being difficult. Well, I don't know, do I? You see, the point is... Yes? Come on. What do you want to tell me? Well, I don't want to tell you anything. Oh. Well, then. No. I actually want to discuss something with you. Ah. I'm all ears. <coughs> the thing is... What? The washing up liquid. What about it? I always buy the washing up liquid. Yes, I know. It's not expensive. No. One pound thirty-two pence, to be precise. Really? Oh, yes. Washing up liquid has gone up a lot since you last bought it. I see. Where are you going? I'm going to watch television. Look, there are thousands of topics we could talk about. Millions of topics. Art, politics, women, football. And you want to talk about washing up. Liquid. I'm going to watch television. What I'm trying to say. Yes. I'm trying to say. Yes. Would it be possible for you to pay for the washing up liquid this time? I mean, part of it, anyway. Yes, of course. Why didn't you say so in the first place? <laughs> Goodness me. We're friends, aren't we? <laughs> it's 50 pence, all right? Only 50 pence? That wasn't very generous, was it? No, but why didn't the man say exactly what he wanted? Well, because he's British. Did you hear the expression that means, I'm listening carefully? I actually want to discuss something with you. Ah, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. En español se dice exactamente igual. Soy todo oídos. Listen again to a question at the end of the story. He wanted to say, give me some money to buy the washing up liquid. But instead, he said this. 
Would it be possible for you to pay for the washing up liquid this time? Would it be possible for you to pay for the washing up liquid this time? Would it be possible? This is a very polite way of asking someone to do something. Tony, would it be possible for you to introduce the next part of the programme? Certainly. My pleasure. Es un placer. Well, like you, British people do like to talk about their national lottery. We asked some of them this question. What would you do if you won the national lottery? Are these people's dreams the same as yours? If I won the national lottery, I'd buy lots of cars. I can't drive, so I'd have to learn to drive first. But I would buy lots of sports cars, big red ones. If I won the lottery, the first thing I'd do is go and live somewhere else, somewhere where the sun shines all the time. I'd probably buy a nice house by the sea and spend my days lying by the pool drinking exotic cocktails. If I won the lottery, I'd probably spend two weeks on some distant island, enjoy myself, lapping up the waves, and then I'd probably come back and realise that I've got very little money left and I'd have to go out and get a real job. If I won the National Lottery, I wouldn't be one of these people who said it wouldn't change me. I'd invest a certain amount, but I'd certainly enjoy a lot. I'd spend most of it. If I won the National Lottery, I'd give the money to my mum, nan, dad, spend some. I might give some to charity, uh, um, that cancer fund. If they won the lottery, what would they do? One person said, I might give some to charity, organizaciones benéficas, like the Cancer Fund, la fundación para la lucha contra el cáncer. Other people had different ideas. They'd buy sports cars, coches deportivos. They'd live on an island in the sun and invest, invertirían some of their money. But they also said that they'd probably spend too much and then they'd have to find a job. Perhaps it's better not to win the lottery. That's what this man thinks. I wouldn't want to change my life at all. I'm very happy as I am. If you change your life, you change all your friends or lose all your friends. I think I'd be very unhappy to win the national lottery. <laughs> We're going back to the 1890s, over to the That's English newsroom. Good evening. Here is the news from That's English. First, the headlines. Good news from the Stock Exchange as Great Britain's exports increase again. Charles S. Rolls meets Henry Royce. And American Express introduce the Traveller's Check. But first, our main story tonight is about the export figures for the past 12 months. Over to our economics correspondent, Peter O'Henry. Peter, are these export figures as good as people say? Yes, Trevor, they are. It's official. Britain is now the richest country in the world. And it looks as though it's going to stay that way for a very long time. Of course, much of this wealth comes from the British Empire. Peter, there is talk in the City of London of a possible decline in the British Empire in the next century. <laughs> there may be talk, Trevor, but that's all absolute nonsense. You know, all the experts say the British Empire will last forever. Are you sure? If I had any money, I'd bet on it. <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Two talented men met today. Mr. Henry Royce, who makes electrical equipment, and the wealthy sportsman, Mr. Charles S. Rolls. They say they will open a factory to make the best cars in the world. So watch out for those Royce Rolls cars. 
And finally, a company called American Express have invented their own kind of money for travellers. They're calling the new type of money travellers' cheques. Thanks very much, but I think I'll stick to pounds, shillings and pence for the time being. At the beginning of the programme, we talked about two problems with money. British people are often too embarrassed to talk about it. And you never have enough. Yes, but here's another more serious problem, and it's to do with plastic. Plastic is the common word for credit cards and store cards. Tarjetas de crédito y de grandes almacenes. A problem with plastic is that people sometimes think they have more money than they really have. And they forget about interest rates, tipos de interés. We're going to find out about Christmas in Knightsbridge. Knightsbridge is an expensive shopping area in central London. Try to answer these two questions. Why can credit and store cards be a problem? And what happened to Wendy Workman, one of the people mentioned in the report? Christmas in Knightsbridge. Amidst the festive lights and trees, a glittering display of goods for those who can pay, and even for some who can't. And if you haven't got cash readily available, and you've got a bit of plastic in your hand, and you see something you want to buy for your family or your friends, it's easy to just go and use it, get what you want, and worry about it afterwards. Wendy Workman ran up a debt of nearly £7,000 on an income of just £11,000 a year, some of it on her collection of store cards. Easily available in high streets, they're convenient, especially for those who are finding seasonal expenses are getting on top of them. But when this Christmas's reckoning comes, it may well be particularly hard to swallow. Over two years ago, with interest base rates at 15%, these well-known stores were charging an annual percentage rate around and above 30%. John Lewis was an honourable exception. Now, with base rates more than halved, the big stores' rates have barely moved. Frankly, there is no justification for those rates of interest. What it means is that those stores are probably making as much money out of lending out money as they are actually as trading as a store. One shopper, though, won't be tempted by those special offers this Christmas. Wendy Workman doesn't carry plastic anymore, preferring to know exactly what she has in her purse. Did you get the answers? Our first question was, why can credit and store cards be a problem? The answer is, because you can spend more money than you have. And some of the companies who issue the cards charge very high interest rates. What about the second question? What happened to Wendy Workman? Vanessa, what was her income, sus ingresos? Her income was £11,000 a year. And how much had she bought with plastic? She ran up a debt, incurrió en una deuda, of £7,000. So you can see what her problem was. She spent far more money than she could really afford. So she decided not to use plastic anymore, but to pay for things with cash. Goodness, Vanessa, look at the time. We've got two minutes to buy our lottery tickets. Sorry, bye. See you next time.